<laughs> and now broadcasting live from the dark room studio at Craven Community College, it's in the know. Hey, and welcome to In the Know. <laughs> this is the show where we get together and we just uh, get silly. We have some fun. We talk about things happening around town. Maybe we whisper a little bit before the show apparently, starts. Apparently, <laughs> I kind of spilled the beans on that one, that we don't take ourselves seriously. We don't take ourselves no. seriously. No, we don't. So I'm sorry if I talked over you, Zanetta, because I didn't have my earpiece in. So, mm. But good morning. It's a Wednesday morning, and this is just what we do. It is. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat. There's a lot of pink and red happy Valentine's vibes. It was going, not was intentional, going? but uh-huh. I, you know, of course, I got my pretty blue or purple behind me that um, yeah. Zanetta makes me look cute. So thank you. <laughs> so, but no, I didn't do it intentionally. But yes, I did. I brought us something it's, yummy today. It's February. And I can it, tell. It is. Well, and it's also National Heart Health. So, you know, be good to your heart with hugs and kisses, right? So there's a little boop, 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 right? Because we're going to miss next week for Valentine's Day. So. Right. Um, I'm just hoping that we can get a gif of you going whoop, 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 and then we'll just use that over and over again. <laughs> we can do that. Just throughout the show. That'll be, that'll so, be the TikTok. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yes. When we uh, post it to YouTube later, we'll just add in that sound effect. Okay. When it, instead of a applause or a laugh track, <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. We'll have you in the lower uh, corner. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, So it's starting to get a little aromatic in here. Can you tell? I can. It's a little aromatic. So um, hopefully you brought your breath mints with you because I'm going to be snatching some. I did. Yes. Okay, cool. Good shake. So today is National Lux and Bagel Day. So I got up this morning and I made you some mini bagels with Lux cream cheese. That is so kind. Red onion and caper. And then I topped it with a, I'm going to let you grab one with a napkin. With my heart, boop, it does boop, smell napkins, good. and um, okay. and take one. So, <clears throat> and of course we have guests at the table today, so I can't not feed them as well. Mm-hmm. So to my right, yes, I have that is Jennifer, your right. Yeah, to my right, <laughs> I have Jennifer Bear. She is our lifetime director of Lifetime Learning Center here at Craven Community College. And then on the other side is mm-hmm. another very dear friend of mine, Joan Taylor, and she is with Atlantic Dance Theater, and. Tell me your title. Artistic director. Artistic nice. director. We like artsy folks, yeah. don't we? <laughs> that sounds like a fun title to yeah. have. Yeah, artistic it is right? the fun, director. It's the fun job. Yeah. For so, sure. ladies, I'm going to pass this down to you. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about lox and bagels. So, Feb- today, again, it's February 9th in the morning. And so, if you're watching this later, you can still celebrate because lox and bagels are good any time of the year, right? So, bagels are one of the very few breads that are what uh, first? What, what do you do to the bread first? Yes. You boil it. Boiled. Ah. And then you bake it. Very good. So it creates a very soft inside um, mm-hmm. dough, and it keeps it crisp on the outside. Bagels originated, and I did not know this until I pulled this up today, in Poland in the early 17th century. Now we sell over a billion dollars worth of each year in the mm-hmm. United States. Scandinavians, let's go to the topping, are mm-hmm. lox. Lox are a cured salmon in a salt brine, and it usually takes several months to do. So that's where we get that. They use the fatty belly of the salmon, resulting in a buttery, silky texture that pairs well with cream cheese and bagels. I love it. I'm a big fan of smoked salmon. Me too. Uh, I always feel like I'm a bear when I eat it. (laughs) (laughs) Ripping the belly out of the salmon. I feel like a wild animal in Alaska. In the fall. Yeah, exactly. Catch the salmon. But it is getting very aromatic. Now, I did top mine because I like, remember I talked about, well, I didn't say it on air, but last week when I came in, I'm like, oh, I ate something that had a little... Tuscan seasoning on it. So I, Your herb? My herb. Okay. I, so I topped it with Tuscan Farmhouse Blend. So you can buy this downtown at the olive oil store. And just a little plug for them. Um, and I love this. It's called Salt Sisters. And so it's got an herb blend. Um, so anyway, enjoy on that. So you put that on top of the bagel. I just I sprinkled see that. Okay. it on top just to kind of give yep. it a little extra oomph. Now, I could have done it on top of the cream cheese because, of course, you can get different flavored cream cheese. But this just kind of took a little over the edge a little bit. So, nice. Now, what's a caper? Oh, God. It's something pickled, right? Yes, it's, it's a, a pickled what, ladies? I have no it's, idea. It's um, the stamen of the... It's a pickled berry. It's, I don't know what it's... It's a flower. It's from a flower. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a berry. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should have looked it up I think first. it's part of a <laughs> You're flower. Just guessing? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a berry. But anyway, I think if somebody knows what a caper is and i got the petite ones the little tiny ones because mm-hmm. the other ones kind of just roll off when you bite yeah um put it in the comments okay yeah, yeah. let us know what is a 
Where does uh, are you going to offer some uh, lox and bagels to our friends in the booth? I do. We don't do this show by ourselves. No, anymore. we do. We have people in the booth. I've got my friend Zanetta and Holly. Can we say good morning, ladies? Good morning. Good and yes, morning. I did make you one. So if Holly wants to sneak in and grab it, we can do that. So just leave me one on the plate. <laughs> so anyway, um, on well, there was one other thing I wanted to share with you. Well, about I'm going to have a bite of it uh, bite. while you're explaining what it is. Um, right? It's uh, it's very cute, Megan. I'm, thanks. I'm impressed with your presentation <clears throat> and your your heart shaped napkin and all well, of it. Thank you. Yeah. So when I pulled it out of the now. bag last night after the grocery store, um, my daughter looked at me, Michaela, and she said, "I mm. said, um, I said, what do you think the day of tomorrow is going to be?" And she, <laughs> I started pulling one thing at a time, and she said, "Charcuterie board day." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Good guess, but no." I think every day is charcuterie board day. Charcuterie right? board day. Yes. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Icebreakers Mints. <laughs> <laughs> Put those right there on the table. Very good. So again, um, that's all I have to talk about. Locks and bagels, and I'm glad you enjoyed. It's always a special yeah. treat in our house. I did tell Zanette I was going to make it as, into a schmear, so you could mm -hmm. easily put this, mm -hmm. you know, into a quick blender or chop it up and mix it together and just have it as an easy schmear. But um, which I like that word. You like that word schmear? Mm -hmm. I like that. I word. never use it. <laughs> well, it you, I just use it three times in one sentence. Schmear. How's it different from a smear? Schmear. Isn't it the same? I don't, I don't know. know. That's what I'm asking. That's why I will not use it. So, uh, but uh, so Marie has given us some <laughs> clarification on capers. Thank you, so Marie. You know. mm -hmm. From the Food Network. <laughs> capers come from a prickly bush called Caparis spinosa that grows wild across the Mediterranean and parts of Asia. The capers we see in the grocery store are the unripened green flower buds. Good job, nice Joan. Job, Joan. Of whoop, the plant. <laughs> Once they're picked, the immature buds are dried and then preserved. Capers are either cured in salt or pickled in brine, which is what gives capers their trademark savory, briny flavor profile. Thank you so much, Marie, for sharing that with Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. I have so. now we are in the know. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Yes. We are good to go. Yeah. But we're not here just to talk about no, bagels and, and capers. And, and capers. I want to talk about dance. What about you? I want to talk about the great dance caper. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna solve the mystery before that's, this is over. That's yes. The next musical. Yes. The dance yes. caper. Yes. So, ladies, we've got some fun ballet stuff coming up and I want to hear all about it. So I want first I want to hear about what the Atlantic Ballet Theater is the, Atlantic it? Dance Theater. Atlantic Dance Theater. Uh, tell us about that first, Joan, before we jump into the event. How much do you want to know? <laughs> um, start with its founding. I'll start with and, the beginning. Yeah. I so, mean, it's only half an hour show, so. Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me when to stop. Just go. Okay. <laughs> um, Atlantic Dance Theater started in the mid-1980s. That's the 1980s. Um, with I Elizabeth remember that. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. Um, big hair and everything. Oh, yeah. Lots of big hair. <laughs> yeah. And I actually danced back in the 80s, so. Me too. Well, this was here in New Bern. And I was not. Yet. Elizabeth Pope began this. Mm -hmm. um, she has a huge love of dance and wants to share it. And so she started Atlantic Dance Theater, and it started as a regional dance performing group. And she would pull dancers from other places. They would do a professional <laughs> dance performance in New Bern. Um, and it sort of changed and morphed over time and became, um, th they took it to the schools. Mm -hmm. um, JT Barber started the master's program, which was funded by the nonprofit Atlantic Dance Theater. Um, and it was um, arts in school, dance arts, and combined with other form of art, music, um, and then we sort of stopped for a little while. We had a little hiatus and we regrouped. Um, Elizabeth contacted me and Paige Whitley Bogus, who's former president and Baroque dancer in New Bern, um, world class dancer. Um, and we began again right before COVID. <laughs> And it was a great time to start. It was, we were rock and roll. I mean. And then, shoom. Yeah. Um, but we did not give up. No. We are nothing if not persistent. Yeah. So we <clears throat> began our outreach to the schools. Our mission is to serve underserved audiences. And by underserved, we mean anyone who does not have access to professional dance performances or maybe classes mm -hmm. so 
during COVID, we did our outreach to, we began in Jones County Schools, and we had Solo Sana from Mali, West Africa, Zoom in classes for every um, school in Jones County elementary schools. Um, a one hour class taught the kids African dance. Um, wow, that's neat. They were in the classrooms. The joy <laughs> on these children. I mean, they had been through a lot. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we did this in the spring, so it had been a tough year. And to have them dancing and learning from Solo, who is a, just a wonderful man and a wonderful <laughs> teacher, um, it, it was inspiring. So, so fast forward and tell me how you collaborated with Carolina Ballet. Carolina Ballet <laughs> came into the picture. We are trying to bring professional dance to all the schools. We've entered Craven County. We're now going to Pamlico County this spring. Um, I am a ballet teacher, and so I wanted to bring ballet. And I, as the artistic director, I'm tasked with finding artists to come either perform <clears throat> or teach. So um, I just contacted the Carolina Ballet. I've sent dancers up there and I contacted Adam Schiffer, who is um, the Director of Development and Education Outreach for the Carolina Ballet. And we just began a conversation and I asked him about their Dancers in Schools program. And it is a program already in place, and they come and do um, a small performance, a pas de deux. Um, a male and a female dancer come. They The dance of two. Yes. I, I appreciate you <laughs> knowing that I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> the dance of two. I did that. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> uh, they give a little lecture to them. They did a little pas de deux, and then they... Um, they get down and talk with the kids, and then they teach them a dance. So I had the conversation with Jennifer about that. It's, it feels like it's um, a master class, in, in a sense, you know, where there's that display, and then let's get uh, let's get your feet moving as well. Mm -hmm. yes. So Jennifer, how did you connect with Joan to get this as a life um, part of your lifetime learning center? Programs? So um, I attend meetings uh, down at the Bank of the Arts, where we have like an arts alliance, like the nonprofit um, arts groups meet down there mm -hmm. at the Bank of the Arts once a month. I can't make it every month, but when I do go, I always meet other interesting people doing things. And one of the things that Jonathan Berger, the um, director of the Arts Council, was talking about was just um, you know, we have so much talent here and so many interesting nonprofits mm -hmm. working together. How can we work more together? Not mm -hmm. duplicate efforts, not um, uh, continuing on to kind of be um, in competition with each other. Yes. More so, how do we collaborate on mm -hmm. the things that we all think are important? So Elizabeth Pope was at uh, the meeting and she was talking about really wanting to bring the Carolina Ballet and I was then booking my Exploration in the Arts mm -hmm. series and mm -hmm. I says, well, there's no reason if the ballet can come that they couldn't be part of my series. That means we have Oren Auditorium because mm -hmm. it's a college project. Mm -hmm. That means we can use... Um, you can keep costs for tickets down down we could keep costs mm -hmm. for tickets and then when we met the ballet folks were so excited Atlantic Dance Theater was so excited that they said we'll help raise the money because in order for us to bring the ballet we are the tickets would be seventy dollars a piece mm -hmm. so who can afford to go right. so the fact that Atlantic Dance was willing to write the grants and uh, get the sponsors I mean that really made it possible because mm -hmm. otherwise the financial commitment would have been beyond, you know, just ticket feasible. sales, just right? Feasible. So, um, and, and so their part of it not only was the connection to the ballet and meeting and, and connecting with Adam to contract the ballet to come for the two days, um, the two performances, um, but also they did a tremendous job in soliciting sponsorships and also grants. Wonderful. So we have a lot of people. Zanetta, that do we too. have a, a picture of the sponsors up? Do we have that available? No, we no, don't. she may not. Can I? Can yeah, we talk please, yeah, about? Give them? them a shout out. Okay, well, so we're talking about that. We have uh, Carolina East Health System um, is, is the major sponsor, and then we have uh, received support from the law offices of Oliver and Cheek, uh, the Pope family. 
Janice and Dallas Sutton, the Harold H. Bate Foundation, which is good to all of us, uh, Craven Arts Council and Gallery, Craven County Community Foundation, the Copeland Family, First Citizens Bank, uh, the North Carolina Arts Council, Fund Development, uh, Guaranteed Rate Insurance with Lloyd Daw, uh, Bob and Carol Maddox, uh, John Robert and Allison Maddox, and Sumrall Sugg Attorneys at Law. And then I believe um, we just got news that Sella Ford is also on board. And oh, I may wow. be missing someone, but they'll all be in the program. And then some other uh, individual donors and, and uh, quite a few. Quite yeah. a few. Yeah. That's, quite a, so that's a lot for one these show. These are our too, major. Right? Well, and, yeah, yeah, we are doing two performances. Right. But, but um, it really. You know, whatever comes from this, there will be seed money to do other things mm -hmm. as well. It's yeah, yeah. not just to support this one performance. It's to support the mission of Atlantic Dance and make sure that we can cover the costs of these productions. Speaking of the performance, let's dive into that and talk about times and dates, how you get tickets. Okay, so we are, um, the ballet will be here for basically two days, a, a residency type thing. There'll be two performances, Friday, February 24th, and that's an evening performance at 7.30. And then Saturday, uh, February 25th at 2.30 p.m. Both of the events take place at Oranger Auditorium. Tickets are $25 for adults and $15 uh, dollars for students. So very reasonably priced tickets. Mm -hmm. We're thrilled about that. If tickets are still available, can they get them at the door or only online? Well, it's kind of hard to say. Tickets okay. are really starting to move quick. Okay. So um, my my gut feeling is we'll have some at the door, but mm -hmm. you could even call and reserve them and just make sure. So okay. um, either go to our website at cravencc.edu slash LLC. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a uh, you can always call the Lifetime Learning Center at 252-633-2618. Uh, um, I want Joan, hey, well, yes. Joan, I want you to, to explain a couple of things. First, the, the title and what they're going to do on stage, and then also about the classes. Right. So the performance that they're doing, when I talked with Adam about doing this, we wanted it to be similar to the Dancers in Schools program because a full-blown performance by the Carolina Ballet with a full company was not feasible. So we talked about it, and what they're doing is an informants. So it's um, you'll see what the dancers do um, to warm up on stage in class, and then they'll perform, and then they'll do a Q&A after. At the, so it's very atypical of a ballet performance. You will have one-on-one -on -one, you know, information from the dancers. We've also scheduled ballet master classes for the dancers to give classes to local ballet students mm -hmm. from anywhere. Green, we have Greenville, oh, Moorhead, from Havelock, Havelock Jacksonville, City. Swansboro. And coming from all over. Yeah. Any ballet students can come and take a master class with with some of the instructors, and we have four classes available, and they are filling up okay. as yeah, well. Yeah, one is full. One is full. And it does require a reservation. Yes, yes, and you can do that through the Lifetime Learning Center. The sign-up is through the Lifetime Learning Center. Okay. Um, same places. And that is Saturday um, morning. And the classes are at 10, 10 and, 11. and 11. So there's two at 10, two at 11. Yes. And that's Saturday morning, February 25th. That's yes. And it's going to be where? Held where? This will be held at Downey Stance okay. in New Bern. Downey Stance Studio. It's the only studio we could find that had enough studio space so to run simultaneous classes in the same place. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, we're really excited about that. Yes. Very exciting. But it is only for existing ballet students. Yes. Right? yes. So not I can't go down there and be on point within an hour. Yeah. Yeah. No right? Intermediate and advanced students. <laughs> I'm really disappointed now. This, I'm just this surprised you know shot. what on point was. Hey, we're going to do more in the future, <laughs> and we will have <laughs> a beginning at the bar. Don't you think? We should have a beginning class if you've never taken yeah, a Sure. Class. I've done that before. I've yeah. taught beginner adults. Beginner adults. Yes. Yeah. Very fun. But what I'm getting from you is don't try it, Craig. Don't don't think that you're gonna and that's okay. I know <laughs> I know my limits. It would be entertaining. It, it would, would not be, be successful. especially if you showed up in tights. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Men, men in tights? Yes. Men, men. Yeah. The Robin Hood? Men, yeah, yeah. Men in tights. 
Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Yeah. We've got to move forward because we got to talk about what's going on this weekend in yes. the community, mm-hmm. and we will continue to plug this event. And um, don't go anywhere, ladies. We're just going to talk a little bit about this, and then we will um, come back to you. Okay. Yeah, you can eat your <laughs> lock and bagel more? now. Yeah. All right. You want to uh, start or you want sure. me to? Sure. Sure. I'll start okay. us off. Okay, so uh, this weekend we have Art Walk. That's Friday, February 10th from 5 to 8 p.m. in downtown New Bern. Gosh, I can't believe it's Art Walk again. January just went like boom, like Every that, month. didn't it? It's happening. Uh, look, at, look, look, look at that bowl. Yum. Yum. Uh, Art Walk is a free self-guided walk over 30 different stops in downtown New Bern to visit stores and galleries and see everything that New Bern has to offer. The Bank of the Arts will be featuring her story in the main gallery. Her story seeks to highlight the female experience and what it means to be a woman in the modern era and throughout history. The exhibition's title is a play on words, conveying its intent to explore both her story, the personal narratives of women, and her story, the history of women and their roles through time uh, through another lens. Craven Arts Council and the Twin Rivers Artists Association are proud to present the 2023 Craven County Valentine's Day card sale in the Director's Gallery gallery for the month of February 2023. Created by students in all grades in Craven County schools, all proceeds are donated to Craven County art teachers for purchasing classroom supplies. This year's sale will take place in the Director's Gallery at Bank of the Arts for the month of February, priced at $3.50 each. These, that's a, that's a good deal, good deal. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, these affordable Valentine's gifts can help fund arts education in Craven County by donating all proceeds for the purchase of art supplies. Uh, and one other thing that is happening uh, Friday during Art Walk, I, I guess that's tomorrow, uh, is uh, the New Bern Civic Theater is having its grand reopening ribbon cutting event as well. Oh. So go and see all the new curious, gigs in there. Mm-hmm, yep. So if you're curious to see all the work that's been done to the stage, to the new seats, uh, new sound system. Buy tickets for uh, the upcoming uh, shows. Uh, all of that you can go and do tomorrow night. Awesome. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Very good. So, the Cupid Shuffle, Valentine's Day experience. Do you know how to do the Cupid Shuffle? I do not. I do not I'm either. a terrible line dancer. Should, maybe just... we should have a, a lesson mm-hmm. for that, Joan. <laughs> the Cupid Shuffle. Sure. Okay. Saturday, February 11th, at, from 6 to 11, The Flame at on News Boulevard. Valentine's Day isn't just for couples, but for singles, too. All are welcome to the Cupid Shuffle Valentine's Day experience. What are you doing? You dancing over there? I think so. Is that the one that's like, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. very good. Yeah. I'm, You're cordially I'm, invited to join us at the Flame Catering and Banquet Center for the Cupid Shuffle Valentine's Day experience. Prime rib carving station, full buffet, stop dancing, and <laughs> and a dessert gift giveaways. Live entertainment by Joe Brown and Joe Brown and the band. Uh, special recognition for the best couple and the two best singles. Wow, so that's pretty cool. I don't know how you, would you pick the best singles. Most enthusiastic line dancer. There oh, you go. There you go. I like that. Okay, yes. there you go. There's going to have a picture booth and cash bar and more. Whether you're in love, looking for love, <laughs> or loving yourself, this is the Valentine's Day experience for you. Tickets are $50, cash or check only, available at these locations the Flame Catering Banquet Center, Newburn Area Chamber of Commerce, Bank of the Arts, and Mitchell Hardware. For more information, you can contact 633 1193. Go get your shuffle on. Your turn. Classical lunch, uh, February 14th. Hey, that's Valentine's Day from 12 to 1 p.m. at Bank of the Arts. Spend your Valentine's Day lunch at the Bank of the Arts where Carolina Chamber Music Festival favorite pianist Melvin Chen presents a sparkling performance of Beethoven's beloved Diabelli Variations. Chen illuminates the music with con... Oh, I can't talk. Chen illuminates the music <laughs> with conversation prior to the performance. Tickets are $20 for general admission, and veterans get a discount. Tickets can be purchased at carolinachambermusic.org. And the following day, uh, February 15th, there is a historical lunch and learn at Carolina Color Pavilion. The question has been asked many times over the years, did black soldiers fight at the Battle of New Bern on March 14th, 1862? Not possible, right? After all, the U.S. colored troops weren't formed until 1863. Though scant documents exist, historian Claudia Houston has followed elusive threads of evidence of blacks who joined the army ranks prior to emancipation and the formation of colored troops. Her fascinating program will answer the question with a resounding yes. Claudia will introduce William Henry Johnson, an independent man of color who who did indeed fight for the Union at the Battle of New Bern. Let's dine and discover together 
over a great lunch at the Chelsea Chelsea restaurant. Be prepared or prepaid reservations required. Cost is twenty four dollars for the historical society members and twenty seven for non members, which includes your meal, drinks, service, and gratuity. Make your reservations at newburnhistoricalcenter dot org backslash lunch dash and dash learn. <laughs> Just go to the Newburn Historical Center and you'll find it. Because yep. that was a long one. Newburnhistorical.org. Yes. It's going to be there. It will be yeah. there. <laughs> All right. Carolina East Foundation is now accepting nursing scholarships. Now until April 21st. Nursing scholarships are available for full-time students enrolled in an accredited college, just like here at Craven Community College, who are pursuing a nursing degree or licensure. You can find all the details and requirements to apply at carolinaeasthealth.com slash foundation slash scholarships, just like you see on the screen. Perfect. And finally, we invite you to come back next Wednesday, February 7th. It's, that's the 7th. It's the 16th. February 16th at 9 a.m. Episode number 40. Can you believe it? No, I cannot. That's actually a lot more. It's like 72 for you and I total, but only... 40 here in this darkroom studio here at Public Radio East. We're going to need to have a 100 episode celebration. Yes, we do. Well, we're close to 75. Can we celebrate 75? No. Okay. No fun before 100. All right. Well, (laughs) please join us live on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Craven CC or catch the replay of our YouTube channel. Next week, we will be joined by Dr. Michael Cassiello, a cardiologist, who will discuss heart health for National Heart Month. And we are excited to have him on as we continue to try to think healthy. Um, We would like you to um, join our podcast as we grow. And please remember to follow and share. um, And what are on what? Yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube. Perfect. Uh, uh, Thank you for catching Follow us on (laughs) Facebook, of course. Uh, And then if you go to our website, crimsonc.edu slash in the know, you can uh, find past episodes. Or if you would like to be a guest or have an idea, drop us a line there and uh, we'll Uh, reach out to you and see if we can get you on the show. Love to have that. Yep. Absolutely. So this takes us to the end of our show. We want to thank Jennifer and Joan for being here with us. Um, Jennifer is always a great guest. We love having her here with us. And Joan, we hope to have you back in the future. I'd love to. That'd be fantastic. So again, thank you everybody for joining us today um, at the In the Know podcast at Craven Community College. And we will see you next week. So stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.